Hi guys, so the news today out of Iceland are like Grindavik has become like an island and yes, that makes sense if you look at the headline that the Icelandic newspaper, uh, the morning newspaper MBL has released, um, they're saying it looks like an island because it's been under siege from lava on both sides, especially on the western side this time from this eruption, the last eruption was threatening the eastern time uh, the eastern part more that's why they built a second row of defense walls on the eastern part because the last eruption did already breach the existing outer ring of the defense walls so right now it looks good so far the eruption is still going but it doesn't look like that there's lo lots of new lava advancing towards these defense walls so it seems Grindavik is getting away again this time right which is great so so it seems that the defense walls um, have worked and they're saying they have saved the town and have saved valuables in the town and uh, also what they're saying now that these defense walls have attracted attention worldwide so it could be that other countries that um, are facing lava flows are now looking at Iceland and and want to learn what they're doing and how they're placing these defense walls and maybe do this in their own countries as well because the officials said that they have never done this in this way in Iceland before and uh, of course, um, it is it is interesting and it is especially exciting for them to see that this Grindavik Island, so to speak, that it has really worked. Everything's black around Grindavik and inside there's the town. I mean, it's just kind of sad that basically the town is dead anyways because people are moving away. Um, they have just been bought out by the natural disaster insurance and the government because the problem is the hazard level that they have uh, put up, especially for Grindavik, crack collapse. It's like a Swiss cheese underneath Grindavik. So they don't know. Are they more hidden dangerous could there more cracks open all of a sudden especially dangerous for kids who want to play inside Grindavik so the future of the town is in limbo and it is unknown what will happen to the town there are people who definitely want to come back and live in the town the businesses want to continue because they don't get that support that the residential homeowners are getting with the buyout plans and that's of course a problem and you know we talked about the sheep farmers and the sheep owners that had their sheep and pens and pastures inside Grindavik and then the animal rights organizations were basically accusing them of animal abuse because of the air pollution and the threat by lava and yes you you guys wrote in the comments well why did they bring them back and but I think they did not receive the same financial support that the homeowners got. And you know, to do an emergency evacuation with a couple hundred sheep or even 20 or 30 sheep is not the same um, as like get your bug out back and leave your home. Um, so I understand and I feel for the farmers, it's not easy. And especially if you have grazing grounds there, that's money, that's food for these animals that otherwise you would probably have to buy. And the question is buy from where? So um, it's not that easy. So maybe they should give them more support as well. But the problem is the Natural Disaster Insurance of Iceland has already announced that if there's future events of natural disasters, the people that might have their properties destroyed or um, be in uninhabitable, they might not receive that amount of money that the people of Grindavik have received right now because basically the natural disaster insurance is sort of broke after the payout of the residents of Grindavik. So I think they have to do some adjustments and, and changes and probably the insurance rates will go up for everyone in Iceland. So. It is what it is. What can you do? There's a new government coming and in place in Iceland and we will see what they're doing, what they have to say. So far, everything looks good in Swartzengi, Blue Lagoon and Power Plant. The lava does not threaten that part. They were defense walls that were built to protect the power plant um, because it's a valuable energy source for um, Sodorns for the Reykjanes Peninsula. Um, all good so far. What they're worried about a little bit is that U.S. Navy power 
um, a communications center that is west of Grindavik. They have built some smaller, shorter defense walls to protect that as well. And there's a lot of lava that did flow there. Um, it did flow against the pole mass there. Um, so they're saying that the fence walls there, they have been greatly affected by that lava flow. They have held up so far, but they're saying there's a limit to how much they can be raised in that area. And at some point um, they're estimating they will either overflow or they won't be able to sustain the lava indefinitely. So that is something that they're constantly reviewing how endangered that area is. You see an aerial picture here, these round circles, there's these transmitters, these masts that are put up there. And of course, this looks like a very flat, low-lying area. It's easy for the lava to flow there. One thing um, that when I when I saw what they posted this morning um, on that picture is that I see um, that the that road that leads out to the west out of Grindavik there you see it there in the in the right corner has been overflown by lava and then there's the second defense well yes they have left that gap open so that this road could be used but I'm wondering why they did not build the defense wall along that road but probably the problem is had there been much more lava they would have needed to direct that lava towards the sea because you can only divert it further west for so long or it will build up and then will flow over that defense wall. So probably um, it was a risk that they had to take to sacrifice that road. So I, I get it. So it was just when you look at it in the first place, you think, whoa, why didn't they protect the road a little bit better? But probably for a bigger lava flow, would not have worked anyways but it's an impressive it's an impressive picture to look at for sure so about the eruptions that are taking place on the Reykjanes Peninsula in general Tholdr Thowaldsen is saying something interesting today um, of course he says yeah the eruptions in and around Grindavik that's a rather difficult situation but he says and that's a little bit preliminary but they don't have new measurements yet the Met Office has said it needs a few days to really determine this but Thowaldor is saying that the good news is that it seems that the upcoming of magma from that deeper lying magma reservoir that has been feeding the more shallow magma reservoir that is underneath Srotsengi, that this flow from the deeper magma reservoir is reducing. And if that is reducing, then the shallow magma chamber is filling up at a lower rate. And then maybe these flow tunnels will be clogged and maybe the eruption is ending. I think that's what he is saying. And he has posted this on his Facebook page as well. And uh, he says, if it continues like this, then the prophecy of Harald Sigurdsson and his colleagues seems to be on the right track. And this eruption series in the Sutnuka crater series could end in July or the first part of August. And uh, then he says, and that's mind blowing, if this comes true, there will be an 800 year break in these events on the Sutnuka crater series. So why is he saying that? Because we know the Reykjanes Peninsula did just wake up from an 800 year sleep. And that involves the eruptions at Fagradalsfjall as well. So why, if it's only stopping in the Sudnuka Crater series, I mean, that would imply that they're thinking that the Fagaradalsfjall eruption has already been also been fed from the same magma chamber. There were theories that each one has their own magma chamber that is being fed from underneath. So would that mean that it's all over? Although experts said, well, it just woke up and it could last for decades or even centuries. It's an interesting theory because if that was really the case, then Grindavik could be saved. Then there'd be enough time to fill up all the cracks to really do like an underground 3D modeling. And uh, then all, you know, then all the buyout, all the fuzz, 
maybe could be reversed. I don't know. Will people go back? Will they think it's safe? Interesting theory. So I'll tell you more about what um, Haraldo Sigurdsson has said. So together, um, Haraldo Sigurdsson, he's a volcanologist, and together with a geophysicist, Grimo Björnsson, they have predicted that the eruptions in the Sutnuka crater series would end in July, and they have predicted this before the current eruption even started. So they believe that it's likely that with every volcanic eruption that has happened in the Sutnuka crater series, the magma starts to solidify when it comes in contact with the cold rock there at the far end of the magma tunnel. And then it could be that like a wedge was formed. It's like a it's starting, the tunnels are starting to get more narrow and more narrow and more narrow until they finally close. And something like this seems to have happened uh, to the tunnel that was connecting the shallow magma chamber with the eruption site. Because this time the earthquakes gave them an hour and a half sort of thing warning time. And that is only happening if the magma needs to grind its way to the eruption site. In previous eruptions, the warning time was close to zero because the tunnel did already exist. Magma just needed to flow. So it seems that the magma has solidified in that tunnel already. So why wouldn't it solidify in the tunnel that comes from the deeper magma reservoir? It's an interesting theory. So they're saying, or they said, that the magma tunnel under the Sudnuka crater series has undoubtedly narrowed little by little after each eruption. So it's like residue remains in the pipe. And of course, this inevitably reduces the flow to the surface. So Haraldo also is using data that have been established by the Icelandic Meteorological Office. And he says that during the eruption that that magma intrusion that happened in November in 2023, the lava flow was about 750,000 cubic meters per, per day, and it has steadily decreased since then. And it was 250,000 cubic meters per day in the last eruption. So he says, this access tunnel is constantly narrowing. The cooling and the solidification of magma at the edges of this corridor is constantly narrowing the vein of this corridor and will eventually stop the activity underneath the Sutnuka crater series. Um, so their conclusion is, they're saying, based on the data that we have gathered, we predict the end of the eruption at the beginning of July this year. But of course, it all depends how quickly the magma corridor solidifies and cools down. Um, it mainly depends on the thickness, on the size of the magma tunnel, which is unfortunately completely unknown. They don't know and they have no way to measure this. So interesting stuff, interesting stuff. If that's the case, that would be absolutely the best case scenario that they could expect right now. They have changed the hazard map again. They have changed it from emergency level to danger level because the danger of lava flow in zone 7 especially is not that great anymore. But the risk of gas pollution is very high. So the prediction is that it'll be all over the country. So that's definitely something that has to be monitored. The police chief has announced that the eruption has reduced its lava flow significantly. And right now the lava is flowing mainly between Hagafell and Selingerfell. They are talking about the roads. So they're saying Grindavik is cut off, except one road is open um, on the eastern side. That is Surostranda Vegua. This road is cleared and that's the only acceptable escape route out of town. That's what they're saying. But the residents are allowed to go into town. But police chief is urging them to be very, very careful. Children should not be allowed to stay in town. And he's repeating what he's been saying for months now. Everyone's responsible for their own actions and inactions. So they're not taking responsibility. 
They're giving journalists access to Grindavik, but they're pointing out that no tourists or anyone should enter the eruption area um, using the um, Grindavikovigo rope, but they can't anyways because they would have to climb over hot lava and that's basically impossible right now. But of course, the ban does not apply to emergency responders and some scientists and even some groups and some individuals that are being given permission by the Icelandic Press Association. So we can say that the eruption has reduced, but the activity of the eruption has been quite constant and stable in the last 24 hours. And that's why they need to expect a lot of volcanic fog and air pollution in the coming days. The Icelandic Meteorological Office has made an announcement about that on their website. There is little or almost no seismic activity measured, so everything's calm for now. The Met Office is saying that during the next few days, they will provide more information on the development of a new potential magma accumulation underneath Svartsengi and about the progress of the eruption. So should the land start to rise again under Svartsengi, that would be an indication that this cycle will continue. Should it become well, it means maybe this eruption needs to end until the land rises again, like it did in the past. Just the last eruption that we had was quite unusual. The eruption started and land started to rise again with the eruption. So we have to wait and see. I think it's preliminary to say this is going to be the last eruption. If the land rise will not happen and not even happen after this eruption ends, well, I think then it's time to be a little bit more positive and maybe a little bit more optimistic about this, but I don't trust it unless it really stays quiet for a while longer. I'll for sure keep you updated about this, guys. Thanks for watching. Wait for my update about Campi Flegri in Italy. It's rumbling there. This will be out in a few hours as well. And until then, thank you so much for your support for the coffees you bought me on my buymeacoffee.com site. Um, link is in the description if you want to buy me another one. Um, it's been badly needed. Some of you were worried. It's like, oh, where were you? Took a few hours for the next video. Um, on eruption day, I stayed up until almost 1 p.m. making videos and shooting updates out for you guys. And then I only slept three hours and continued. And then it really hit me the, the next day. I, I My head felt like I've been run over by a train. So um, it took a few hours longer <laughs> until I released the next video so thanks for staying tuned in guys i see you very very soon stay safe bye bye